Hello! This tutorial is going to show you how to use your new SDCCD student email account. In this tutorial, we will learn all about the new student email account. We will find your new email address. We'll log into that email and set up a two-factor, multi-factor authentication using your phone as a second factor. We'll look at a variety of ways to view your email. We'll demonstrate how to forward to your favorite email program, and we'll find out how to find more resources online. What do you need to get started? Well, we're going to have to access your portal, so you'll need your 10-digit student number and your portal password. You'll also need a computer or device that has Wi-Fi. You'll need a phone that you can use as an authenticated source. This could be either a landline or a cell phone. And then if you would like to install the Outlook app on your device, you'll need access to the Google or App Store. These are the steps for activating your student email. We need to first locate your student email address, then using the web or an Outlook app if you prefer, we will be entering that email address and the portal password. We'll set up multi-factor authentication using a phone, and then we'll view your email online or in the Outlook app. We'll also demonstrate how to forward this, if you prefer, to your private email address. The new student email is a Microsoft account. Outlook, Hotmail, Live, MSN, those are all accounts that are also managed by Microsoft and are Microsoft accounts. Your student account will be used for all SDCCD correspondence beginning on March 27th, and your account will include Office 365, which is a suite of free online tools. This email is going to be used for many SDCCD services like My Portal and Canvas. Your new email also will provide you with student discounts on software, technology, and more. And you will be provided with those Office 365 tools and one terabyte of storage on OneDrive. Well, you'll have this account as long as you continue to take classes through SDCCD. When you've gone for three consecutive terms without enrolling, you will lose access to the account. And when you sign up again, you'll be assigned a new account. So this tutorial instructs you to open a web browser. A web browser is software on your device that connects you to the internet. You have a web browser built into your phone or your computer. Some examples are Edge, which is generally found on a Windows computer, Safari, which is generally found on a Mac, Google Chrome, Firefox, Brave, and Opera. Internet Explorer is not recommended. If one browser is not working for you, you might try another. Multi-factor authentication is a security process that requires users to provide two or more forms of authentication to verify their identity. All accounts will be required to use multi-factor authentication. In this case, we will have two options for your account. You can use the Microsoft Authenticator app or any other Authenticator app, or you can use your phone by texting or calling the phone. Because most students will find the phone method easier to set up than the Microsoft Authenticator app, this tutorial will focus on the phone. There's a few different ways where you might view this. One of them is on the district site or you can open up any browser and type in outlook.office.com or you can download the Microsoft Outlook app from the App Store. And then the other option is that we will be describing how to forward this SDCCD email to your own personal email account and we'll demonstrate that as well. Currently the only forms that are available are the phone in the Microsoft Authenticator. However, after you create your authentication, you can go back and you can select additional options like email or security questions. These instructions are included on the Emeritus Student website, sdcestudent55.com. We've set up a new category called Student Emails, 
and in this category is a page entitled Setting Up Additional Multi-Factor Authentications, like an alternate email address or security questions. If you prefer to set up your account on a smartphone, the process will be different. It includes downloading the Outlook app and the Microsoft Authenticator app. We do have directions for this method on the student website, sdcestudent55.com, under student email. It's called Setting Up Your Account on a Smartphone, or you can click on the link to see that. Now, some of you might still have that email that was sent by the district and it tells you what your student email address is. If you have that, look at what your student email address is, but don't go any further. This tutorial will explain how to set it up. If you don't have that note, then we're going to have to go to your portal to find the information. If you've forgotten your portal password, you can go back and find help. So you would open up the portal and then you would tap forgot your password and you'll be asked some security questions. If you can't answer the questions, you'll have to reset your password and you have to do this through the campus. So you can either go in person to a campus or you can sign up for one-on-one -on -one sessions with virtual student services. And this is the link. You will need a government issued picture ID to reset your password. And once you have it, write it down so you don't forget it. All right, so now you have your portal password and we're gonna to go to the portal. So open up any browser, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Safari, whatever you have. Sign in to myportal.sdccd.edu. Enter your 10-digit student number and your portal password. And don't forget, if you forgot what that is, see the previous screen to find out. Click on your student dashboard and then click on student quick links to open up the options. So there might be a plus here. Just click on the plus to see this menu. You're going to go all the way to personal information and you're going to select that. From there, you're going to see a screen and it's going to be on addresses. You want to go to the fourth option, which is email addresses and click on that. And once you click on that, you're going to see two different emails. You're going to see your preferred email, which you currently have, and then you're going to see your student email. All you do on this page is write down what that student email is. And we're going to use that student email during the rest of this tutorial. So to begin with, we need to open up Outlook and put in your new student email. So there's different ways to get to Outlook. We're just going to go online and use the Outlook app. So open up the web browser, type in outlook.office.com into the address bar. Now when you do, you may see a different screen. So these below here are three different options that you might see when you type in outlook.office.com. In this first option, you already have a Microsoft account and it's showing up. I think you probably logged into that account. That's not the account that you want to use though, so you will select use another account and then just wait and we'll go on. In the second example, there's no Outlook email associated with your Outlook account. So in that case, you would just go to this line and type in your student email address and then click Next. In the third option, you already have an existing email, Outlook email, that shows up on the screen. So you're going to want to delete that. So just put your cursor at the end of that, of that address and backspace until that, that uh, line is empty, and then put in your student email address, and then click Next. So all three of these, all we're trying to do is get you logged in with your email address. We have not yet put in the password, okay? So next, 
we're going to put in the password. Now it is very important that you use your, the same password that you use for your portal site. If you have forgotten that password, we did have instructions earlier, or at this point you can just click on Forgot My Password and you can answer the security questions. But it needs to be the same password that you use for your portal site. After that, click Sign In and then we'll go to the next screen. So now we're going to complete the multi-factor authentication. There's four screens, but it isn't as hard as it looks. Okay, so after you have entered your password, you're going to end up on this screen and it's saying more information is required. Click Next. On the next screen, you're going to see Keep Your Account Secure and it's going to direct you to use the Microsoft Authenticator. For this tutorial, we're going to choose a different method. So come down here and select I want to set up different method and then click Next. Next there will be a pop-up screen that appears. You might have to click the down arrow. You'll see two choices. Select the phone. On the next screen, you have to confirm that you have selected the phone. So hit Confirm. On the next screen, you're going to put in your phone number. So it already says United States. Leave it like that. Come over to this box and type in your phone number. You don't have to put in parentheses or hyphens. Just type it in with the area code and the number. Next, you choose whether to text me a code or call me. If, you have a, if you're using a landline, then you must choose call me. If you're using a cell phone, you can choose either and click Next. Now at this point, they are going to send you a text or they're going to call you depending on what you said in the previous box. So answer your phone if they call you or check your text messages. They're sending you a six digit code. This is time sensitive, so you can't wait till tomorrow to, to respond. When they have sent the code as a text, you enter it here. Now I understand that if you're, call, if you're using the calling method to a landline, I think you'll just be asked to click the star button. Just listen to the instructions there. So once you've entered the code, you can click next and that won't, that won't show up until you enter the code. After that, you, you will receive a screen showing that your account now has SMS verified and that means that they text you, texted you and you responded. That's what SMS means. So click next. And this final step is just confirming this whole process. It says your default sign-in method is a phone. It will show you your phone number and then you click next. In this next screen, they're asking you two things. They're asking you, first of all, do you want to stay, stay signed in? So that is, if you say no, then you're going to be logged out of your account. If you say yes, then you're going to be able to work within your account. You'll want to select yes because to forward your email, you're going to have to be on this page. Now you also have the option of clicking this box. If you're on a public computer, then don't click that box. But if you're on your home computer and you don't want to be prompted to authenticate every time, then click that box. Don't show this again. The final screen that you're going to see that has to do with multi-factor authentication is when you actually are on your student email page. So you'll probably see something like this. You won't probably have any messages. But at this point, keep this open because the next step shows you how to forward this email to your favorite email account. Now this is optional. If you want to keep, continue to view your email in the Outlook account, then you can just skip the step. But if you want to send all of these emails to your personal email account, this is how you do it. So while you're in that email program, if your page is nice and wide, you'll see a little, uh, a little, we call this a gear. It's a circle that has some sharp edges. That's your settings icon and you would click on that. Now, if your page is narrow, next to the address bar, you will not see all these things here. You'll just see three dots. 
So if you don't see the settings icon, but you do see three dots, then click on those three dots. In both of these cases, you're going to end up on the settings page, and you have to scroll to the very bottom of the settings page and select view all Outlook settings. And then from there, your settings will open up in mail, and you'll come down to where it says forwarding, and you'll select that. When you get to forwarding, you will see the box enable forwarding. You can click on that, and then you put in your favorite email address. Now, do you need to keep a copy of it? This means that if this is checked, then your emails will stay on the Outlook account and will be transferred to your favorite email account. If you don't feel like you need to save those on both uh, services, then you can uncheck Keep a Copy of Forwarded Messages. And that way you'll only be viewing this on your favorite email program. When you're done, hit Next or hit Save. The first option for viewing your email is on the student, the SDCCD site, the official site. So you can see this is the address down here, and then you would select student email. The second option is using a web browser. So you will open up any web browser. You'll go to outlook.office.com. You'll enter your student email address and the password, the portal one. Remember, if you have multiple accounts, you have to make sure and choose the student email account in order to view that account. The third option is to install the Outlook app on your phone or tablet. So at this point, you would go to the Play Store, either Google or Apple, and you would search for Outlook. It would look something like this. And then you would see this is what it looks like on the Google Play Store. You would hit Install, and uh, you would be able to install that on your device. If you still need more information, you can email support. You can call student support. You can go to the Virtual Student Services site and request a Zoom session. You can visit a campus in person, and this link will show you a map with all the campuses. You can click on one of those campuses and find the address, and then you can get directions there. And then finally, this tutorial, as well as a few additional things about student email, can be found on our Emeritus student site. And you can get to that by going to sdcestudent55.com. And from there, you would look under New Student Emails. Or if you would like, you can attend a live outreach event. These events are going to be offered in March and in April. And over here, you can see the addresses. And you can see the time. So today, we found your student email address in the portal, or maybe you already had that because you had the letter. We logged into that email address and we set up multi-factor authentication. We demonstrated a variety of ways to view your email, including the My Apps page on the district site, the Outlook app, or on a web browser. We demonstrated how to forward to your favorite email program and we offered a variety of ways to help in setting up your student email. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that this helped you understand how to set up and use your new student email.